As a follow-up to the Thing episode, I wanted to quickly give you a glance at what I did with the SVG it generated. I wanted to do some procedural interactive graphics processing on it, and I wanted to do it in a browser-based environment so that I'd have the ability to use it in every context that provides a modern WebGL-capable browser. This is the result. So I could have gone to CodePen.io and draft some graphics processing based on 3GS. But then, what if I discover later on that I need some server-side computations, data persistence, etc.? Well, I could have gone all in, make a full web app with all its implications of choosing and implementing an architecture, deploying it somewhere, securing it, etc. All just for trying something out and maybe tossing it into the trash anyway. The first approach seemed a little too light, the latter a little too heavyweight. Enter glitch.com. You can think of glitch as a symbiosis between an online REPL such as CodePen, a code repository such as GitHub, and a platform as a service such as Heroku. Just another platform I wanted to try out, and now I can share my learnings with you. Essentially, you can build anything from front end JS snippets to full blown ExpressJS based apps. Actually, Node.js as the backend language isn't even a requirement. The key point is that it's based around the community approach of creators helping other creators and remixing their apps. That's glitch speak for forking, just like you can do with a code pen or a GitHub repo. And also not an important glitch is made by Fog Creek, the people behind Stack Overflow and the founders of Trello. So enough praising, let's get hands on. If this is your first time coding at glitch.com, you will need to sign in. At the moment, you can do this with a Facebook or GitHub account. Once that is done, you can choose between three project templates, Web Page, Express, or SQLite. This app, we will use the Hello Express template. We just need to use a unique name, so I'll just name it Snibbles 3GS for short. For the JavaScript developers out there, Glitch will happily auto-install any modules from a package.json you handed but there is, of course, also a console where I can do this by hand. Let's open the log and paste in a package.json I prepared. As I understood it, Glitch needs a build and a start script, just like most other platforms as a service. So we can use anything here, e.g. webpack. So we add a webpack.config.js. We can also load assets such as our SVG from the last episode. Okay, fast forward to some working code. I just switched to the finished app you can view or remix it here if you like. I just basically copy and pasted the SVG loader example from the 3GS docs as well as the after image example. Unfortunately, I have to say the code from the 3GS examples is not yet integrated into the ES6 module due to namespace pollution. So I had to use the CDN version of 3 and copy paste the necessary shader and post processing files manually. But hey, that's what a glitch app is for. I did the work, you can go remix it. We set up a scene, a camera and a renderer and load the SVG here. You can obtain the URL of the SVG from the assets folder. It's hosted on a separate CDN, not your project root. Other than just reuse everything from the examples I just mentioned, I only assigned a random velocity to every generated circle here, and I used it to update the circle's position in the animate method. Everything else is taken care of by the after image shader, which I gave a quite high feedback value of 0.975, and the respective composition passes, first the render pass surrendering the scene from the camera's viewpoint, and the after image pass applying the visual feedback, much like a chit wake object would do in MaxMSP, for example.